All right, my friends, we're going to learn a little bit what, about what's called spherical coordinates. Um, and so starting with basic Cartesian coordinates, rectangular coordinates, one way to locate where a point is is to have an origin in space and say, you know, how far out do you go, how far over do you go, and how far up do you go? And so then the coordinates of that point uh, floating there you just give as a, a triplet uh, x, y, z. So how far, how far out, how far over, how far up? Another way to specify where this thing is um, is to give a distance from the center in two angles. And so uh, distance from the center is really just the distance from the origin here to the point. Um, and that uh, tends to be called R, um, sometimes a row, Greek letter row. And then we can give two angles. Um, so one uh, angle that we can give is from this, um, what's typically the, the Z axis. Um, and so uh, American mathematicians tend to call that, uh, that angle um, phi, right? And then another angle that we can give is how far over do we kind of rotate in the xy plane? So, um, so this angle is uh, often called theta. And so theta would be the angle that you would crank to uh, from the x-axis uh, to get over here. And so the idea is you crank over to an, uh, to an angle uh, here to kind of specify which plane you're in there, and then uh, Phi tells you how far you've cranked down from the z-axis, and then R tells you how far away from the, um, from the origin you, you actually are. Uh, so in that case, then the, um, we give the triplet or the location of that um, object like this. Uh, how far away are you? Um, how far have you turned in the xy plane? And how far have you cranked away off of the z-axis? So R, theta, and phi. And so what's useful is to be able to go from the, um, the Cartesian coordinates and, well, to learn how to get back to the Cartesian coordinates, let's say, from these new what are called spherical coordinates. Um, and so what we can do to figure that out is um, let's try to figure out how x, y, and z kind of relate to r, theta, and phi. Well, z, of course, is how far up you are here. How far up have you gone along the, the z axis? So really, if we can find, well, this distance or this particular distance here, which is also z, right? If we can find how far up we've gone, um, then th that is then going to be our z coordinate. Well, what you can see if, is if this is your um, uh, hypotenuse of a, of a right triangle, and what you're trying to do then is project that down onto the adjacent side of this known angle, then what you can see is that z would be um, r times the cosine of phi to project it down onto, the, um, onto that uh, axis, okay? Because you're finding the side here that's adjacent to the, um, to the known angle. Um, so z is gonna be r times the cosine of phi. Um, so we can write that down. Um, so z coordinate is going to be r cosine of phi. Well, if that's the adjacent side to the known angle, well then the opposite side to the known angle is going to be um, is going to be r sine of phi, and so that's this distance here. This is r sine phi. This is r cosine phi. Right. Well, so this distance here is r sine phi. So that means that's how big this little guy is right here. This guy is r sine of phi. Well, now what we want to do is get, well, how far, that's how far up we've gone in x. Um, how far over have we gone in y? Well, if, if we know this hypotenuse and we're looking for the opposite side, the thing that projects on the opposite side is the sine function or sine of theta. And so what we're going to do to get this side is multiply the hypotenuse by sine of this angle to sort of project it or take the shadow onto the opposite side. So what we then learn is y then is going to be r sine phi, which is this hypotenuse, but then we need to project it onto the opposite side of this, um, of this right triangle. And then that's going to give us the y coordinate. So we need to multiply then by the sine of theta. 
okay? And then to get the X coordinate, well, we need to take this hypotenuse and then project its shadow down onto the adjacent side. Well, of course, that's gonna be cosine theta to get the adjacent side. So your X coordinate then is gonna be R sine phi, which is your hypotenuse, then projected down using cosine theta onto the X axis. So this is how you navigate between the spherical coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates, all right? Now, if we, suppose we need to go the other way. Suppose we need to go from the Cartesian coordinates back to the spherical ones. Um, well, what you notice here is R is really just the distance that you are from the origin. So really we can use kind of the, the 3D analog of the um, Pythagorean theorem, right? Um, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is gonna be R squared. Um, and so if you wanna find uh, R squared, that's just X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Really just the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and so then uh, if you wanna find R itself, of course you just take the square root of all that stuff. So square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Then the other thing we might want to do is get the angles. Well, so just by looking at the picture, you can see that the um, tangent of theta is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Um, so one easy way to, to write that then down is we can say, well, the tangent of that angle um, is going to be y over x, or opposite over adjacent, y over x. And we can play the same game with, um, with this angle phi. If you, if you look at this, uh, this right triangle kind of made, um, uh, made here, what we can do is if, if this is the known angle phi, um, then what we can do is we can say, well, the, the cosine of that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So that's, that's going to be the, um, the adjacent side is z here, so the adjacent side to the known angle divided by the hypotenuse r. And so what we can do then is say cosine, let me shift this up a little bit, the cosine of phi is going to be the adjacent side, which is z, over the hypotenuse r, which is, we already have an expression for that. So that's going to be square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So these three relationships help us navigate between, get from the Cartesian coordinates to the spherical coordinates. So that's how you go back and forth. Um, so again, in summary, Cartesian coordinates, you're basically saying how far out, how far over, how far up. Um, and with spherical coordinates, you're saying, okay, how far away from an origin are you? Um, how much of an angle do you have to crank away from the z-axis and how much of an angle do you have to crank away from the x-axis and the xy-plane in order to get to that point?